Warning, the following video contains spoilers, but just keep watching. Hello everybody and welcome to the Derek Ruby Show. I'm your host, the previously mentioned Mr. Ruby, and as our Halloween month moves along, we are going to talk about A Nightmare on Elm Street. Now, it was the 1980s, the slasher genre was in full effect. Franchises like Friday the 13th and Halloween were moving along in full swing. Then along came another movie that depicted a red sweater, burnt face guy with a pair of claws that would make Wolverine scowl with penis envy. So our movie opens up with a dream sequence. As we see who we believe is our main protagonist walking around in a boiler room type setting, we also see the claws being fashioned on the table. And there's some very eerie symbolism with goats and stuff. I really don't know what the fuck the goats are doing there. But needless to say, the opening does set up not just one, but two pieces of iconic music that we'll be remembering for a long time. That nursery rhyme really sticks out in your head. I, you know, it's one of those things that's very hard to get rid of. So once the dream is over, Tina gets in the car with her friends, and then they all kind of have a small conversation about the nightmares that she's been having. Apparently, her friend Nancy has been having nightmares, too. So Tina invites Nancy to stay over at her house for a sleepover. As we see a young Johnny Depp, a very far cry from the Jack Sparrow character he would be playing later on in life, and then he calls his mother and uses a cassette tape to fool her so he can stay with the girls. In case you don't know what a cassette tape is, kids, it's an ancient relic from a forgotten time. Then Tina hears some noises, and we get a little jump scare as her boyfriend shows up. And then they go upstairs, and then we get on to the fucking. Oh, oh, oh God! Oh, God! Oh, 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 God! Oh, Morality sucks. And once that's done, we get a lot of the iconic images that we associate with this movie. We see Freddy's head coming out of the wall over Nancy. Somebody's whispering Tina's name as she goes walking around outside. Then we get a pretty good look at Freddy Krueger as he comes out, and he's got these long, brooding arms, and he comes running after her. They have a chase. They start wrestling around. He's trying to get her. And the thing that happens about this is that if anybody has ever seen this movie in their entire life, it is very hard to forget the first kill scene out of this movie because all of a sudden you see Tina screaming, her boyfriend screaming at her. She's wrestling around all over the place, and then she gets dragged up the ceiling and cut up, and it is just one of the things that just sticks out in your mind. <laughs> Unfortunately, her boyfriend gets blamed for the murder, and the cops are all looking for him. Everybody else kind of freaks out about the situation. And for some reason, he decides to go talk to Nancy, even though everybody's looking for him and trying to throw him in jail. And of course, Nancy's dad, being the chief of police, has used her as bait, and he gets arrested. So now we move on to Nancy in school, and she has a dream that she's walking through the school because she just saw Tina. So even though Tina's dead, she's not quite done with this movie yet. And we see some cheesy lines with Freddie dressed up as a girl asking her if she has a hall pass. Hey! Nancy, no running in the hallway. <laughs> and needless to say, he ends up cornering Nancy in the boiler room, and as he's about to put the finishing touches on her, she burns her arm to wake herself up. So we see Nancy laying in the bathtub, and another iconic scene comes up as we see Freddy's hand come up out of the water. Now what Freddy's trying to reach for, I don't know. But her mother knocks on the door, and his hand disappears. She tells Nancy, don't fall asleep because people drown in the bathtub. And what does Nancy do? She falls asleep and Freddy tries to drown her in a bathtub. It's a pretty interesting little sequence. So Glenn comes to visit Nancy in her room. As Nancy has an idea and she wants Glenn to watch her as she goes to sleep. And she can see Freddy brooding over Rod in jail. So she wakes up early in the morning and bitches Glenn out because he was supposed to stay awake and wake her up if she ever fell asleep, and he didn't do that. And they go to the jail. She convinces her dad to let them go see him, but by the time they get there, it's too late. The bed sheet's been wrapped around his neck, and then we get our second kill for the movie. 
So after the funeral, her mother decides to take her to go see a sleep doctor. And as they monitor her, she has a bad dream. And they have a really strange reaction to the situation going on. Her mother just keeps asking, is she dreaming? Is she okay? What's she doing? Is she dreaming? <laughs> and once they wake her up from her screaming, she pulls out a hat. And the mother is like, where did you get that hat? They're all surprised. She obviously didn't come in there with the hat, so I guess they just think she pulled it out of her ass or something. I don't know. Then some time passes back at the house where the mother finally reveals the origin of Freddy Krueger and who he really is. He was a filthy child murderer who killed at least 20 kids in the neighborhood. Somebody forgot to sign the search warrant in the right place and Krueger was free just like that. A bunch of us parents tracked him down after they let him out. We took gasoline. We poured it all around the place and made a trail of it out the door. Then lit the whole thing up and watched it burn. So later on that evening, unfortunately for Mr. Glenn here, he's going to be Freddy's third victim. As he falls asleep on his bed, Freddy just pulls him down in there, and then we just get a complete gore fest of blood just going all over the ceiling. The cops are called, everybody comes and checks it out, and then Nancy devises a plan to get Freddy. And unlike most heroines in the movie, who just kind of play it by ear, she actually devises a plan to catch him. And she goes to sleep and they play chase and you have one of the biggest climaxes through the movie. And one thing that I do remember about it, even as a child, I remember just flipping through the channels and seeing Freddy scratch his claws on the boiler room pipes. And as a six, seven year old, that was pretty scary. So they get into a scuffle and she manages to pull Freddy out into the real world. And they have a fight in her house. She sets up a bunch of traps, which obviously Home Alone borrowed a lot of ideas from. Her dad and the other cops come to help her. The whole house is on fire and then Freddy takes her mom into the dream world or something I, I don't know exactly how that worked but then nancy says that she's figured out the secret and she's not giving freddy any energy anymore and then freddy disappears and the movie appears to be over or so we think as you see nancy and her mom come outside her mom says she's going to stop drinking and her and all of her friends get into the car and the car looks like freddy and we get that one last spot where freddy busts through the door and pulls her mom in <laughs> And that's the Nightmare on Elm Street. So I don't know if all the previous deaths did happen. Did they not happen? I don't know. That movie kind of leaves you to wonder. At least it's not explained in this first go-round. So Nightmare on Elm Street, it's pretty good. It proved that you don't have to be a silent killer to be intimidating. Freddy falls short of his wisecracking self that we see in the later movies. But the things that he does say works very well. I'm your boyfriend now, Nancy. <laughs> This movie plays on your mind because sometimes you're not sure exactly when a person's dreaming or when they're not. So it is a slasher movie, but it's also a psychological thriller. And it really does not have a high body count. I mean, there's only like four deaths in the entire movie. But as far as horror movies go, this one is a very good one. And so I'm going to give A Nightmare on Elm Street five stars. So thank you for listening to The Derek Ruby Show. I invite you here to join me next week as we continue our Halloween month. Let me know what you think about A Nightmare on Elm Street. Please hit the subscribe button, leave likes and comments. Check out all the social media pages. The links will be in the description below. And I'll see you guys next time.